So, how to make a chrome metal effect? The question has arisen and I thought that would be an interesting topic to cover. It could get quite complicated depending how far you want to go, but the first thing I would say is to go and look, Google Images, something like that, at chrome itself. And what you notice uh, from the photographs, try to put the photographs up rather than the CGI images, is that it's by and large a black and white effect so whether that's because the studio's only got black and white lighting in and there's a bit of colour in this one or because of some property of the material it doesn't matter what you need to do is create the impression of that material so look at the images and see which ones most say chrome to you and try to recreate that effect and the other thing that's most obvious is like particularly here is that the material itself doesn't really have much of a colour you could say it was grey but uh, that aside it gets its appearance from its environment so the environment is probably the most significant part of it and then there are other little bits of imperfections that can be included to really sell the idea that you're looking at something real so it's, it's not perfectly reflecting in the real world but if you do CGI then uh, you'll you'll initially get something that's a bit too perfect so we'll start by getting something a bit too perfect to consider the environment and then look at ways we can make it look more realistic so in Bryce then I've set this scene up uh, these three objects here this is one made by Horro this one made by myself in wings default Bryce sphere they're all in default grey that's a default grey and that's just perfectly reflecting sphere and the first thing to do is you can see this isn't too bad that looks a bit chromey so the first thing to do is I'm going to modify these three objects uh, I'm going to modify the material in those and I'm going to set them up so that they are a perfectly reflecting sphere so that matches the one on the right and you can see now that where we've got interreflections inside the object you get a little bit of noise and otherwise it's not a bad start it's not really looking very chromey yet but what it is doing is there's no material colour in this object, it's just a, a mirror. So we've got to consider, as I said, what the environment's saying. And the best environment we can provide to make it look more realistic is a HDRI image that's been taken from the real world. So I'm going to use one of Horro's, and uh, this has come from one of our products. I'll provide a, an inset or something to show you what that looks like. But uh, any HDRI image would be a good choice for this. So I'm going to navigate to my image. This is uh, Lecroof uh, 1280 pixel diameter light probe. And the resolution of the light probe is not uh, greatly significant in this because it's mostly on reflection. If it was being visible as a background, then I would want a higher resolution image. But this medium resolution image will be fine for this job. So I'm going to turn the quality down. I don't need any light output from this because I'm going to use the sun so I'll re-enable the sun which was automatically disabled at the moment can't see much of this because its intensity is set rather low so I'm going to set the intensity up so it's a bit more visible so you can see now you, that it's uh, visible in the backdrop if you can't see that then use select render in scene and I'm also going to add it to the sky because I'm going to turn the atmosphere off so I've not got the sun and the bright sky being incorporated with the HDRI image so to do that I'm just going to check out of here go up to here atmosphere off and set the background to fully black so now we've only got the HDRI image added in okay that's rather colorful now I could tone map this background but if I did that then I'd lose this uh, super sharp highlight because at the moment the HDRI background is high dynamic range if I tone map it will bring it back down into low dynamic range and then I'll, I'll lose the effect of the highlights uh, somewhat so what I need to do I don't want it to be this colorful ideally I want it to be like in these images predominantly black and white so I'm gonna I'm gonna fiddle with this HDRI image and make it black and white so in HDR shop I'm going to navigate to where I've got my HDRI image there we go so that's what it looks like there and then I found that uh, somewhere in here uh, which one was it now is it effects yes if I choose sepia tone and just select white and go OK that renders it down to black and white then I go file save as select HDR format and I'll just call this uh, BW for black and white 
save that, go back into Bryce now, into the Skylab, open and get my black and white image. And you can see now things have been reset again, so I re to need to re-enable the sun and I also need to add the HDR image back onto the sky. And so now, if I check out of here, you can see I've got a nice black and white reflection. And I think that looks a little bit chromier, if there is such a word. I could possibly get away with increasing the intensity of the backdrop at this point or, or increasing the light output. So the thing is that what I'm aiming for, now I keep refreshing my memory, what is, is this sort of effect. So it's quite a high contrast effect that I'm aiming for. So I'll go back into the Skylab and increase the output. So I've got a bit more intensity in the backdrop there. Check out of here give it another quick render. So it renders quite quickly at the moment because it's not complex lighting, we're just using the default Bryce Sun. And the thing that's most obvious now is that this background surface, our ground, is a bit plain compared with what we're reflecting at the top. So I'm going to use a material from another product of Horrows and mine, and you'll see why in a second, and it's going to be it's from Metals 2 and what we've got, Reflective Iron. So this is a reflective iron material and it's got an image texture which is a photograph that Horro took and I processed so that it uh, is a seamlessly um, wrapping material, uh, 2D texture and it's got a black and white image extract from that. In fact, I'll just go into the source editor here so you can see. So it's just a, a picture of a scratched metal surface and a black and white, just copy and paste it over there to uh, provide alpha and what I'm going to do with this is uh, set it to be uh, just a diffuse color so I'll make that diffuse white there so you can see this is already looking like a chromium material this is the direction we're heading in but I'm just putting this on the ground reduce the reflection a bit there we go and see how that looks to provide a bit of a reflection of the background and a bit of information on the ground so by providing a texture on the ground we're providing something for the chrome material that we're making to reflect and that that's the whole point with chrome is it's not what it itself looks like it's what it's reflecting in the background so we've got to consider not only the sky but the ground as well and the things around it the next thing to consider then uh, as hinted at is imperfections in this because it's rather too perfect and the other thing we could do is we could cheat a bit we could use a hyper material to make this more reflective than things are in the real world and then damp that da effect down with metallicy so we could create a bit of a, a a grazing angle highlight on this so this is all trickery it doesn't really matter we just want the effect of chrome we're not we're not really if we wanted to create something that was physically like chrome you would choose a different render engine other than Bryce you would choose something like Octane then you can simulate the material properties exactly but the Bryce's great uh, advantage is its flexibility we can cheat so let's cheat so I'm going to select my objects again that's the chrome material go into the material lab and I'm going to create a hyper texture here to overdrive the reflection so this appears in a few of the videos so I'll go through it fairly quickly so I put a blob in reflection hold the shift key down click on the name go to basic and select check blue that's my starting point and it doesn't matter what the mapping mode is in this case go into the texture source editor for this and turn off color and bump click on these corner blobs select the noise blob and in here you want distance squared instead of standard type you want minimum two octaves and a frequency of minus one. And what this does is it's created a highly negative output. This is a hugely out of range negative output. I need to convert this to a positive output now. So take it over into component two, click on one of the corner blobs, select difference here, and then in component two, we just want nothing. So take distance squared down to nothing and uh, mode standard octave zero in fact it didn't really matter very much as long as the output is nothing at this case so the effect of highly negative differenced with uh, zero output is highly positive but this is so highly positive it's unusable at the moment so we now need to reduce the effect of this by multiplying it so I'll take this empty component now 
put it into the third component, click on one of the corner blobs, select multiply here, and then for the final thing I'm going to use a filter, sign filter, and reset the filter, S drag this down, reduce the A value so it's a flat line, and what you're looking for here is a change in this pattern till the lines start to separate out. When they separate out but still remain slightly coloured, that is a positive output that's quite high but not tremendously high. So this now we can use to drive our reflection effect. So if I check out of here now, the material's turned completely white. That's because it's reflecting the environment so much it's getting multiplied, so it's reflection plus a bit, and you just get white. So this value now, this slider can be used to scale the output of this, provided alpha scaling is enabled. So just check that that is checked, and then you can start turning this down. So one, that's obviously not that reflective. So we'll try four, that's quite a lot reflective. Three, that's a bit more reflective. Two, that's lower than normal reflective. So if we try 2.5, for example, that looks slightly more reflective than things are in real life, because you can see the reflection of the ground is brighter than the ground itself. So the surface has multiplied the effect of the ground up. So uh, if you had the two of these mirrors facing one another, eventually the light would get brighter and brighter and brighter, which wouldn't happen in real life. To bring this effect down a bit, we can use metallicity and bring the diffuse grey to, to just to, uh, to tone the effect down in the middle. So if I start turning metallicity up, you see it goes darker in the middle now. So this is creating contrast in our material, artificial contrast, but bear in mind when we looked at the images of Chrome, then the contrast was well, one of the sort of striking things about it. So it's all about getting the impression rather than uh, uh, simulating the reality in this case. So I'm going to take the reflection up to three. So now you can see this edge is highlighted. That's because we've got multiplication reflection on this outer edge and then metallicity is damping it down through the diffuse channel where it comes to face the camera. So I'm going to try 2.8, just get this balanced out, so there we go. You might also notice we've got a specular highlight here that has occurred. And that, oh, you can't really demonstrate very easily, but from 2.8, is, is as a result of putting this blob in here. So that you get for free. And uh, we can use the specularity in a minute, but we'll just take a look how this effect looks now. I've reset it. OK. So I'll now render this up, and hopefully you get a bit of a sense that this is now a bit chromier than it was before. The effect is subtle. So here's our fully reflective material, and here's our material that's slightly overdriven reflection and then damped down in the middle. So it's a bit darker here, a bit lighter on this outside edge. Uh, the environment's nice and complex, so it doesn't really show up how I've cheated just yet. And you can also see we've got the specular highlight appeared, which isn't there, and that's a result of putting a control blob in reflection, you get specularity thrown in free. So the final thing now is mostly about creating imperfections. And as I've loaded in this um, texture material here from uh, our metals product, and it's already got a photo texture which will be useful to us, photo textures seem to work better with the anisotropic effect if you want to create a realistic surface. Uh, you can create some nice effects using procedurals uh, through anisotropy, but the photo textures do give you the best results for materials to look realistic so far anyway that I've noticed. And um, oh, while I'm at it, I'll mention this. This sun position. Okay, that's the default position of the sun. And I'll just check in the sky to make sure. Oh yes, I want my shadow intensity to be 100. Here's the sun position azimuth and altitude in the Skylab. What I want to do is line the HDRI sun up and the Bryce sun up. I'm not going to move the HDR, I'm going to move the Bryce sun up to the HDR position. Horo uh, provides with his HDRI images information about the HDRI image and in here if you look you'll find that the sun's altitude and azimuth is listed. So we've got azimuth of 0, altitude of 65. So if those values are used here, azimuth 0, altitude of 65, we're now in a position to put the sun in, a, in the same place as it is in the HDR backdrop. And because we've got some specular output from the sun, which is why we're using the bright sun here and not image-based lighting, which is quite difficult to get specular out of, and it would also slow the render down. We're trying to keep things fast and efficient. We only really need 
one light source for this because most of the effect is coming through reflection so we don't need to get things too fancy with uh, our lighting model so keep things as simple as possible it'll make it easier to develop your scene what I've now done got the suns aligned I can now get the effect aligned for this uh, final bit so I'll just give that a quick render and see how things look so got really high contrast now so it should be looking even chromier than it did before and I just want to get some imperfections in this material so I'm go back into my material and in this second channel here for anisotropy I'm going to put a blob and then if I switch to picture because I've only got this um, already loaded so it's already selected this image texture so you want something some scratchy sort of surface it doesn't have to be the color of the material you want it just wants to provide some variation and some scratches and then copy and paste over to this so you've got an alpha channel from it as well so that now we give this anisotropy effect a go that gives us some uh, spreading of the the highlight here and you can see there's a bit of effect in there we've got to choose appropriate uh, frequency so that will have to be judged and the other thing is to consider the specular halo because that will spread that effect across the surface and because I've popped in this uh, alpha channel I can use that to drive bump a little bit don't overdo it with the bump the default mapping mode when you put in a picture texture is for some bizarre reasons sinusoidal that's not helpful to us so I'm going to choose um, let's go for spherical and then and choose some appropriate so a complete rotation is 5.8 and uh, so use multiples of that so that's 11.6 17.7 and then the texture if it's been made to wrap will line up on the surface so I'll just enter that value as my opening gambit there so you can see you've got some nice scratches in there and put a blob in for bump and give it a bit of bump right so that's given us some imperfections on the surface of the material and we'll see how that looks so I think you can see a bit of that effect now here these scratches on the surface the and the bump effect just breaking the uh, the reflection up ever so slightly and that is more or less it you can refine this make uh, small adjustments to the material depending on your background and what you're using as a ground so those those are going to be significant factors because you've got to balance your material out to match whatever environment it's in because it's mostly about providing reflection and this sort of a little bit of effect I think because we're driving th through an overdriven reflection turning the specularity up here is not going to make a great deal of difference so if you want to spread this uh, effect out across the surface hold the alt key down click on the color swatch for the specular halo and turn it up so let's see it's about two four three we'll bring that out a bit more that might be a bit excessive but have a look and see what you think if that's looking a bit excessive you can always either wind it back a bit or you could try offsetting it with your metallicity effect and that will create greater contrast with the material so if you set the diffuse to black for example you can see how extreme that is and then you can see you can you can tone it in and out with this metallicity effect so choose that to 75 let's have a look how that looks so that's gone that's gone quite dark there but it's still got this bright highlight around the outside we're getting a lot of white off the the ground and so we're getting extremes of contrast which uh, we've lost somewhat of the effect of the specular highlights on the material but the thing about uh, material effects is don't overdo them so when you've when you've finished adjusting just turn it down a bit so it's uh, maybe not so strong and uh, that often works better so set your effects up you sort of get used to the extreme levels of the effect and then and then at the, at the end turn them down and they'll look a little bit more realistic when you're done so there you go that's the end of the video hope you found that interesting useful you'll experiment with this effect in your uh, own renders